Funding for FAIR 2021 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... Since 1911, EMC Insurance has partnered with local independent insurance agents to provide protection to our customers. Headquartered in Des Moines, Iowa, EMC now serves policyholders through 20 locations across the country. Count on EMC. Caring for pigs is not just an individual job. It truly does take a village to put a safe, healthy food on your table and keep farming sustainable. Investing in a College Savings Iowa 529 account can give your future scholars financial support to pursue their educational dreams. They grow up fast. Learn more about planning for their tomorrow at collegesavingsiowa.com. I'm Bill Riley, and we're here, we're smack dab in the middle of the Iowa State Fairgrounds. And man, it is so nice to be back. I hope you're all healthy and happy out there in the wonderful communities of our state. And I'm thrilled to be able to share highlights with you from the 2021 Great Iowa State Fair. Whether you're joining us from your living room, your computer, maybe even on your cell phone, we're glad you're along for the ride. Tonight, we'll hear the roar of monster trucks as we peek in on the action over at the new Elwell Family Park. Some young rooster crowers will vie for ribbons on the Pioneer Hall stage. And our own Charity Nebby shares the flavors of some new fair foods. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? So it's no wonder we're all ready to have some fun as we celebrate the Iowa State Fair. Let's get it rolling with a look at the State Fair Parade, a tradition that makes everybody smile. At last, the summer's main event is here. It's the return of the Iowa State Fair and kicking off the week, it's the tradition of the Iowa State Fair Parade. Joe and Virginia Barksdale were named the 2020 Parade Marshals, while Al and Nita Fincham were chosen for 2021. Joe, you had to wait a year. You're still going to be Grand Marshal. What's that going to mean to go down in front in this parade tonight? Well, it's an, it's an honor for my wife and I to be selected to be the Marshal of the Iowa State Fair. It's, we just, we, we're, we're just overwhelmed by it. Absolutely, I mean, everybody is t talking to us and t about what takes place on, the, on it, but we've been looking forward to this now ever since we found out that we were going to be the Grand Marshals, our co-Grand Marshals. All right, Alanita, congratulations on being Grand Marshals of the parade. What was it like when you got that call? Uh, it was amazing. I mean, it's beyond our wildest dream. We didn't think that would ever happen. <laughs> so it's a simple, you get a lot of phone calls from the fair. Did you expect this one to be different? No, not really. I was very impressed that they would consider having us be Grand Marshal of the Iowa State Fair Parade. We're just thrilled to be here.
For complete coverage of the Iowa State Fair Parade, visit iowapbs.org slash fair. Since the fair was canceled last year, it feels like everybody is trying to make up for lost time this year. And I think that's why the list of new fair foods is so incredibly long. It was really hard to narrow it down to figure out what I'm going to try. But I got the job done. All right. I would like one flaming hot Cheeto funnel cake, please. Okay. You got it. So I actually, I hear that you are the creative genius behind the Flamin' Hot Cheeto yes, Funnel Cake. How did you come up with this? Yeah, this one actually was derived because my customers would come up and see the red velvet, and they go, oh, is that one spicy? And I'm like, no, but it will be. <laughs> so. so no pressure on me or anything like that, but um, do you like it? I don't eat them. <laughs> Because they're too spicy? No. Well, that plus I don't eat funnel cakes. I've just made way too many of them in my lifetime. So no, I don't eat funnel cakes. I just have the fun of creating them. Here it is. My flaming hot Cheeto funnel cake. Not something I ever thought I'd eat. I actually really like this. So it tastes like, at first it tastes like cornbread with nacho cheese sauce on it. And then the heat starts kicking in. And I will be feeling this for a while. Can you describe for us what's in the Tennessee Twinkie? Yeah, so inside our Tennessee Twinkie is a mixture of Monterey Jack cheese, cream cheese, um, barbecue chicken, stuffed into a jalapeno, wrapped in bacon, and smothered in barbecue sauce. All right, I'm here with a group of cousins that has volunteered to try these delicious looking Tennessee Twinkies for us. All right, are you a fan of spicy food? Yeah. Good, how about the rest of you? Not so much, but I'll try Not it. So much, but I'm to try. Have you ever had a jalapeno pepper before? No. <laughs> Are you a little scared? Yes. <laughs> All right, what's not too spicy? Mm -mm. Messy. <laughs> it is messy. It's, it has a little bit of kick to it, but it's good. All right. Mm. That's really good. So what makes it atomic? Um, the atomic strawberry shortcake is we take a bread, we cut it in half, put it on the bottom, scoop of strawberries, and then whipped cream, then a scoop of ice cream, whipped cream, strawberries, dollop of whipped cream, and then a strawberry on top. Right, so it's the ice cream that makes it atomic then? Uh, no, it makes it so that it's double. The original one is just half of that. Shortbread. Strawberries. Mm. That is a very good strawberry shortcake. And in the heat of the fair, I think it tastes better than any strawberry shortcake I've ever had. The ice cream does not hurt. Well, I have once again eaten my way across the Iowa State Fair. It was delicious. I'm stuffed, I'm exhausted, and it's time to give these trotters a rest. We're in the sheep barn for the FFA Sheep Show, and this year there are 245 exhibitors showing 325 sheep in 20 classes. But it all comes down to one winner. This year, the judge is Josh Coons from Seymour, Texas. So my judging career actually started, I was a 4-H and FFA student as well and uh, started showing sheep when I was 10. And so that's where kind of my passion began for, for livestock and growing up on a farm in, in central Indiana, I got a livestock judging scholarship to Texas Tech University. And so uh, I started judging at 18, some county fairs through Indiana and Illinois and, and do about 30 shows a year roughly. So my day job, I'm actually a county extension agent for 4-H and Ag both in, in Baylor County, Texas. Prior to that, I was a, county, or a high school Ag teacher for eight years in both Indiana and Texas as well. So, so today in market lambs, you know, it doesn't vary from show to show. My priorities in, in selecting a good market lamb are the same. 
a market animal has to look like a show animal. It's a, it's a livestock show, so they have to be well cared for. They have to have that quality look and that show ring presence uh, out there. And they have to be a market animal. So they have to combine the carcass traits uh, that are you know, deemed necessary by the industry in terms of muscle and fat cover and, and that sort of thing. So really, you look at the whole animal. It needs to be a combination of a lot of good traits. And, uh, and at the end, I, I always ask myself, which one is the hardest one to make from a breeder's perspective or standpoint? Which one is the hardest one to develop over a time of breeding and genetics? I think the, the type of, of livestock that we're raising has changed. And if you look back into the 60s and 70s, in particular cattle, were really small framed, heavy muscled cattle. They were low to the ground. Sheep were kind of the same. And then we went to an increase in size, uh, frame size. Well, we brought that back down and now we're kind of moderating livestock again and still having an acceptable amount of muscle. Uh, so I think just by maybe some of the industry trends, uh, we've seen just better livestock being raised, I think, and, and more emphasis on muscle and structure and, and that combination. So I'll try to talk to every kid that comes in the gate. On the microphone, it's really hard to go through and discuss 25 or 35 kids in every class and their lambs. And to be honest, you know, <laughs> a, a kid's attention span is very brief and a parent's is even more brief, I think. Uh, and so I, I try to discuss the top five on the microphone, and then I'll talk individually to those kids throughout the show on, you know, why did you place last? You know, they, they deserve, I think, uh, an explanation. I was that kid one time that got a lot of brown ribbons, and, and they said participation on them. And so that's how I got better, by, is by judges just telling me, hey, this one needs more muscle, or, or you need to get more fat on this lamb, or it needs less fat. So I try to offer just a little bit of, of information to each kid as I place them, uh, and hopefully they can work with that with next year's projects. Just like to see him hand a little bit fresher over his loin and rack, okay? like to see him handle just a little bit harder right through here, okay? Yep. Good heighted, good presented, just a little bit more tone, all right? And Phoebe Sanders of Clarion Goldfield FFA is our grand champion. She's a junior at Iowa State studying ag business. My sheep weighed 137 pounds. He was from Salinas and his name was Cap. Yeah, I won the state fair last year, but it wasn't the real fair, so this means a lot more. Well, that's all from the sheep barn. Congratulations to all our winners. Hey, this year, we're going to test your state fair knowledge with some trivia questions. The first one tonight is true or false. This is the only location in Des Moines that has ever served as the state fairgrounds. We'll bring you the answer a little later in the show. But right now, we're going to meet an impressive 4-H'er, a welder, who has won numerous ribbons for his work in metal art. I'm JD. I'm a welder. Gonna spark it. I am kind, thoughtful, nice, creative, and passionate about my artwork. I'm gonna take six of these pony horseshoes and make it into a little frog. It's the first piece that started the metal art. It started with the bucket of junk challenge through 4-H. It's Hercule the Hawkeye or side of Cyclone, or it could be just whatever else. You get a bucket of junk and you have to say, they say, make something. I would say the first time, was a little hard. I didn't have the right shoes on the first day. day. <laughs> they had the mesh, the sparks. <laughs> my dad taught me, then my Ryan, my job coach, taught me a little bit. And I just kept learning from there through trial and error. And I taught my, my mom a little bit. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> I am unique because I have special needs. That means school was a little harder for me. Another thing that makes me unique is how I see things. I kind of see things in 3D or puzzle kind of view. How I see things leads into the creation of my business, JD's Creations. 
My mission statement is inspiring others while giving junk metal new life. What I like about my business is I just can be creative, make new things, and take special orders. It's just fun just to kind of see what special orders or just unique pieces you can get from auctions, junk, whatever else. This is a special order here. It, these are two hay forks I put together to make a flag with a, it's gonna be a flag with blue stripe here. Sometimes I do tutorials like this here, which could act as a cell phone holder also. <laughs> 4-H taught me hard work pays off. It also helps with communication and life skills. My ingrained cutting board made it to the state fair and won the blue ribbon, and also made it in school in the shop class. Just a feeling of accomplishment. I would recommend 4 H to others because it lets them try new things. Welcome everyone. We are about to have the youth rooster crowing contest. Are you ready guys and gals? Okay, it sounds like you are. Thank you. That was better, we heard that. I want to cover your ears. Two, three! Yeah! Here's our two winners, and I'm going to have each of you step over to the microphone. It's fun, and I was very surprised. My cousin Leah said that one of us would get first place, and she was right. Welcome to my normal domain now of studio interviews. But I'm going out to the Iowa State Fair, which means I need to have a corn dog conversation. We have 
loaded up on a golf cart, and we are going to have a chat today with Lois Martin. She's from Marion, Iowa. She first came to the fair in 1946. She also exhibited a hog at another fair in Kentucky back in June. Oh, did I mention she's 92 and a half years old? What was the Iowa State Fair like in 1946? Well, many people lived in tents up in the campground. I happened to be able to sleep in the trunk of the car. The car my boyfriend had, the seat fold, somehow folded in so you could lay in the back in the trunk. Now, you brought your kids here. How many kids did you have? Five children. And did they all experience the fair the same way, or were some different? Oh. Um, well, they all came when they were little, but I'm sure that as the years have gone by, why camping got a lot different than it was. They remember um, how the horses, came, some of them remember how the horses came up through the campground with a big thing and picked up the garbage. We are right outside the swine barn on the south side of the Iowa State Fairgrounds. They're prepping animals. I see a family that just had lunch together. I know you've said you've made several lunches for everybody here. What's the fun like, or is it fun, <laughs> with everybody hanging out here between shows? It's a bonding of people, of uh, not neighbors necessarily next door, but people that you've known for years that have been showing pigs, and their kids are grown up now, and they're bringing pigs and their kids. Uh, it's just like a big giant family reunion. You get to come and see all these people. And, oh, I just met a lady a while ago and she says, oh, I know you, you're Lois. I've been out to your house. I don't know what her name was, but she knew me. But she must have seen me somewhere. I don't know where. You wanna go for a ride? Sure, I'd love that. Do you ever get golf cart envy? No, no. Have you ever done the fair via golf cart? No, no, not at all. Well, it gets busy around here. We're gonna go around the back side. All right. Of the area you know best. What are your memories of going by this area? Loading, unloading and loading up hogs. Waiting in line for your turn to get backed up to the chute. Yep, you have to. Sometimes when it's time to uh, check in, everybody wants to be first, and some get a little rowdy, and uh, so you just have to have patience. Oh, this is a nice, cool place, isn't it? It is. There's a breeze. So yeah. You probably know. Oops. This guy's going to run See, right. That's the joy of all of this. Even when we're on yeah. recording, we have to watch for people. To Absolutely. Come I have an electric car. Or cart and boy you've got to really watch because people don't watch where they're walking and um, they have a lot of speed those carts do yeah. All right. well Lois thanks for going along with my uh, yeah inaugural Thank corn you. dog we'll conversation I've had my corn dog today too when you visit the fair do you enter any contests there are so many choices here are some of the top winners Okay, my friends, we're going to take a very short breather, but we'll be back in a flash with even more highlights from the Iowa State Fair. Like the monster trucks as they rumble along, the delicate beauty of the decorated cakes, and the magnitude of the big pumpkin contest. The State Fair celebration continues. Meet us back here for more on Iowa PBS. Visit Iowa PBS at the State Fair to get a sneak peek of new programs and projects that celebrate Iowa and feature some amazing stories. 
Plus, you can stay cool at the fair and show off your love for Iowa PBS with our free fan giveaway. New name, same fairgrounds location. Find us in the Varied Industries building. We can't wait to see you at the fair. That's the best news I've heard all day. On Finding Your Roots, Roseanne Cash. It's odd how it makes me feel a little differently about myself. And Clint Black. I've joked with friends about what kind of rascals we'd find. Stars of country music. Wish I could go back in time. You are descended from a patriot. We were in the fight. Plus. Would you like to meet your DNA cousin? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Finding Your Roots. Tune in or stream Tuesday at 7 p.m. Welcome to Iowa PBS Passport, the best way to stream your favorite PBS shows with thousands of hours to choose from and something new every week. Lions, llamas, and leopards, dolphins, donkeys, and deer, monkeys, mules, and meerkats, wolves, wallabies, and warthogs. Oh my, it's TV for you. Everything you love about Iowa PBS, on demand at your fingertips. Go wild and lose yourself in Iowa PBS Passport. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest bronc rider of all time, Casey Tibbs. I ride a horse with balance and with my spurs. I've got to feel my spurs at all times or he's going to buck me off. Whether you were an adult... Say, aren't you... Uh... ...or five years old... You're Casey Tibbs! You were drawn to him. It was like a magnet. He's gone, but he's not forgotten. That's for sure. He's not forgotten. Tuesday at 8 p.m. Today at the Riley stage, we saw some phenomenal talent. Here are the young Iowans advancing from today's competition. Bring you the talent championships here on Iowa PBS Sunday, August 22nd at 8 p.m. Welcome back, folks. There's a famous quote that says, Patience is the art of hoping. These talented bakers are all hoping for ribbons in the decorated cakes competition. When visiting the Elwell Family Food Center, an absolute must is checking out the decorated cakes display. The creativity is never ending, but getting a behind the scenes look at the judging and what it takes to get these cakes here is a story all its own. entering this cake into the competition. Can you yep. tell us a little bit about your cake? So it's a flower cake where I did different techniques from painting to fondant work and then different molds and then the tops buttercream. Well, I wanted to do something fallish, so I decided to carve a pumpkin and um, I made like a wood grain board and then just made some leaves and put it all around just for a little fall, fall touch. Yeah, it's beautiful. So which one of these cakes are your favorite? You Probably think? Medusa. Medusa? Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about her? Um, I had her in my brain for a while and just decided to make her. And I feel like all of the snakes just totally pop. I love it. <laughs> I have a sculpted cake here. It's a helmet from the video game Fallout New Vegas. Okay. It has um, battery powered working lights. It's got a little bit of Rice Krispie treat to kind of oh, give it some stability there as well. Do you play Fallout? No, my son does. Your son does? Yeah. He wanted me to have, make something like that for his birthday um, a few years ago. Oh, I'm sure he loves it. Yes, he's been showing it to everybody. <laughs> 
it. It's a chocolate cake that I've made a couple of different times with some really cool golden sprinkles on top, and I added some Snickers and Reese's peanut butter cups. That way it is a chocolate explosion, which is what I call it, with little gold flakes all over it. Thank you for entering. That looks yeah, beautiful. I yeah. I hope you had fun doing it. Yes, I did. <laughs> what do you think of the entry so far? It's always a variety of skill levels, of uh, inspiration, of colors, of techniques. It's fabulous every year, and it's always different. And we're also excited about this. This is so cool. I'm going to have the judges introduce themselves, and they're going to start right away. So what is your favorite thing about the cake decorating competition? My favorite thing is to see the growth. Mm -hmm. A lot of time we have uh, people that enter year after year, and even though I don't know whose cake belongs to whom, you can see, oh, this, this style I've seen before, and perhaps it belongs to a former contestant, and you get to see the progress that they've made, all of the practicing and um, uh, energy and time that they put into it. That's the best thing, is from year to year have people grow and experiment with more techniques and then have new people that have never done it before. Every year, this competition never disappoints. And for 2021, these cakes delivered. We are entertainers and, and we want to give the people a show and we want them excited and it's so great to see the young new fans coming, the little kids all bright eyed and so excited and stuff. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm still excited to do it. We're going to be jumping the cars, clearing the cars, hitting the barrier, doing wheelies. We're going to tear them up. We're going to destroy everything out there. How about another round of applause? Oh yeah, it's time to introduce our drivers. First off, driving unnamed and untamed, Anthony Ritter. Driver of the red, white, and blue Cyclops out of Bakersfield, California. It's Terry Woodcock. And in the red attack, Jacob Ladwig. Who's ready for some monster truck thunder? Make some noise. I started off in motocross, and then I went to street racing. Evolved to four-wheel drives, and all of a sudden in 1979, I got a crazy idea. It was a good idea to run over a couple cars behind a friend of mine's dad's car lot. It's a blast. I mean, I'm 61 years old, and everyone goes, when are you going to quit? And I go, never. And give it a start. Here we go. He loves you fans. Here we go. Let's see what he can do for you. Oh, boy. Get up some speed and up he goes. Hello. Make some noise. Here he goes. Crush the skull. It's in another wrap. Nice job. My dad was in the military, and then I spent my summers in Washington State working on farms and you know, farming, as everybody knows in this area, harvest is important and everything, and you, something breaks down, you figure out how to fix it and keep going, and that's the same thing as monster trucks. I mean, you have a one-hour show or a two-hour show, so you learn real quick how to make things work so you can entertain the fans who bought a ticket to come watch a show. Now, he is going to find a good spot to park that jet engine. 
facing that car on those two concrete blocks. He's got to get it just in the right position to fire out 7,000 pounds of thrust. Here we go. Oh, you can't feel it. They can burn a car. I like yeah. the jet part. That was the best. Yeah, the jet engine. I like to take the time and, and thank everybody for coming out and thank the parents for bringing the kids out. We'll sign the shirt you're wearing or whatever, you know, anything we can do to give you that memory. My mom's going to be very happy. Yeah. Our uh, demographics is huge. I mean, you got a two-year-old kid and a 102-year-old guy that just loves it. Boom! Wow! That's got to be the most stairs so far. One of the great things about vegetable gardening is how scalable it is. You can start with a few containers of tomatoes. Maybe the following season, you graduate to a couple of raised beds. Eventually, you could start selling your produce at the farmer's market. And finally, push your skills to become a year-round CSA. But then, there are the Iowa State Fair vegetable gardeners, the Blue Ribbon aficionados people who know how to meticulously pick uniform shapes, colors, and sizes for a wide variety of vegetables. People like Don Francis, a vegetable gardener who is in a class all his own. I put it all on a spreadsheet so I can keep track of it. There's, there's probably about 160 or 70 classes um, at the fair. And so I probably will, depending on how the hail affected me, probably 130 to 40. 140 entries, maybe. I kind of really got into the state fair and showing vegetables at the state fair. I started about 24 years ago. And under three inches is called the pickler class. But you kind of get drawn into it and addicted. But yeah, that's a nice one. The ag building's just a fun environment to be in the day they judge them. But I don't know if I'll have a red entry this year because of the hail. We call it veggie day. So my team of people is my, my whether they like it or not, my family and my kids and my wife, and, and, uh, and it's just a fun day. You know, the State Fair is obviously part of the reason I do it. So there you have it, I think I got them all. But I've just always loved gardening. I have to keep the stem on for the state fair, but although we're just practicing now. Oops, see, I broke it. So the whole gardening thing is the drive behind it. The state fair is the push to say, okay, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> but this is what was planted, what date it was planted. You know, it's, it's a year-round process. Every two days, pick, 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 pick. Pick beans, pick beans, pick beans. And you start right after last year's fair is over, you have to order your garlic, you have to think about ordering your onions for the next year. Oh, is, these are actually grown the prior year. These were grown in 2020. So I know I, to be ready for fair, I need to plant cucumbers on this day or beans on this day, and then it just picks up from there. Split, but I'm sure that's an heirloom, and that is gonna taste wonderful. And, you know, you get to eat everything you grow, don't forget that. That might be an entry, two that match. Not quite, see, a little longer, but once the fair's over, that's when you can sit back and say, oh, now I can just, we can eat it now and, and just, uh, we eat it clear through the season, but you, the, the pressure goes off of, gosh, I hope I don't eat the blue ribbon. <laughs> and now the answer to our trivia question. True or false, this is the only location in Des Moines that has ever served as the state fairgrounds. The answer is false. When the state fair first moved to Des Moines, it was held in the area between 38th and 42nd streets, just west of Terrace Hill. I can't imagine that, wow. Hey, history is something we cherish here at Iowa PBS, and we're gonna bring you a little more history right now as we start our nightly look back at 50 years of Iowa PBS State Fair coverage with a look at the 70s.
They were the days of disco and bell bottoms. The Iowa Educational Broadcasting Network, as we were known then, was young and so were many of the folks working there. In 1970, the Iowa State Fair Parade was set to go right by the studios at Tech High School. So they said, hey, let's put a camera in the window and see what happens. Well, the rest is history. Iowa PBS and the Iowa State Fair have been intertwined ever since. In the beginning, we covered every aspect of the fair for three hours a night. Everyone at the network was a part of it. Compared to now, the equipment was large, heavy, and cumbersome. You're looking at the mobile unit, which is used for the coverage of the Iowa State Fair. And really, there's no simple thing. There's a lot of work that goes into it by a lot of people who really never get the credit for for the work that they put in, and it's a fantastic amount. Oh, it takes a lot of work and a lot of people to do it. There are about 30 people involved in covering the State Fair. It was a lot of work, but everyone had fun doing it. The 1970s saw the start of our favorite traditions in our coverage. The butter cow, the races, livestock shows, contests, spectacles, and of course, live music. We were proud then, as we are now, to work on a project that really means something to Iowans and that they enjoy so much. You had a pretty good growing season. This is like the big steer, big boar contest, and so we're the big pumpkin contest. It's all about weight. It's just whoever has the biggest pumpkin. I don't know if he's ever broke 100 yet, but he's working on it. <laughs> we celebrate the strangest things. Sauerkraut, pumpkins, beef. You know, it's it's a celebration. This is, this is Iowa, and uh, we don't need much to have a party. Pulling it off, laying it down, weighing it up. 94, 94 pounds. Oh. Now, Dave, Dave's grown bigger ones. He's grown. Oh, the little kids say, wow, look at that. And then they go on down the line and see a bigger pumpkin. And then they're really amazed, you know. But uh, even the small ones, you know, the little kids love. Their reaction is, what is this? Is this a pumpkin? It's like, yep. Is this a pumpkin pie pumpkin? Nope. <laughs> All right, we got a first try and grower. 78 pounds. That's why you let the professionals do that, and the growers take care of their own. We start with the smallest because, you know, it's a, you draw up to the big one, and sometimes it might not be the big one. It might be the one before that, or the one, you know, before that one. Riley, what do you think? 500. We have a 400 and a 500. All right, we're gonna find out. 637 pounds. In first place right now, Paul Harrington. Every one of them can't be a home run slugger, you know, or whatever. So um, uh, you get every now and then it comes to anybody. You just get one on the vine that's a certain special one. Dave Miller. Don't let him bite. I think you. Whoa. 716. Let's say the seasoned pumpkin growers help the new people and they visit and go back and forth and give them tips. I will say this too, you gotta have the right genetics. You're not gonna take just any old donkey and head to the Kentucky Derby. It ain't gonna work for you. You need the right, these are all Atlantic giants, but it's more than that. We take, we study this to the 10th degree. We use the performing ones that, that win and produce big ones, you know, so. I'm at Earl May one time, I seen these Atlantic giant pumpkin seeds, so I grabbed them. I come home, made a hill in the garden, put about 10 seeds in there. Didn't even know what a clue what I was doing. It grew into the biggest mess you've ever seen. So then I said, I gotta learn more about this. So I started doing techniques and stuff. And so basically we 
we make a plant about the size of a two-car garage, 24 by 30, with one pumpkin to, for each one of them that we do. Just things has changed since then. And Not what I would have guessed, but it's a good one. 915 pounds. First place champion right here. Don and Tommy, you did a good job. Learned that Des Moines City Water, the pH is nine and a half, which is a little too high for fertilizers to work great. Rainwater comes in about six. And then I also learned about parts per million, all the minerals and stuff in the water. So I, my rainwater comes in like zero, zero point three, so I can add more fertilizers to it without getting it too high. But the city water is like 375. So it only get, it limits your amount of fertilizer that you can make effective work. It's kind of complex, but it's true though. So. I save rainwater to water with all I can, you know, and um, that helps a lot. The Best Bagger Competition is an opportunity for us to highlight the important role that baggers play in the customer service at a grocery store. Um, so today we really get to bring them on stage and we have 16 uh, contestants that are going to be competing to be named Iowa's Best Bagger and to represent our state at the national competition in Las Vegas. On your marks, get set. These are baggers you will see in your local grocery store. Uh, many of these folks uh, already competed in their own competition within their own company to qualify to be here at the state event today. I think the best way to do it is uh, looking at this competition is getting all the heavy stuff spread out across, like our, the cans and everything, because you don't want them to rip off. Like once you lift it off the, the back container, you don't want it to just fly everywhere. And the best thing to do is just put like things, like bread, chips, eggs right on top so it doesn't get squished all over the place. Bold of you to assume I have a strategy. It was just go pretty much. I wasn't really trying to think that hard about it. I was just, let's move, move, move. Each contestant will be bagging an identical order of up to 35 commonly purchased items at the store. So everybody will be having the same layout, the same items that they will be bagging. Well, when you get towards the end, you want to save the real light stuff on top, like the paper towels and bread, and it's there's not much room, so you just kind of got to wedge it in there however you can. There are absolutely penalties for the eggs or the bread at the bottom. That would be part of the proper bagging technique. Um, also, if you leave any items on the table, sometimes folks get going too fast that they might miss an item and forget to put it in their bag. There are penalties for that as well. I saw a lot of people, they, they were talking about it back there too, was the magazine. That really uh, threw a lot of people off because well, typically when we check out, we don't see as many magazines. So when they saw that, they got a little confused. People don't buy those anymore. So like, even if you're at the store, I like once in a blue moon, someone might come along and you know get one, but you just you don't buy them, so you don't bag them. And when you see them, you're like, oh shoot, that's right. Then also presentation to an extent, but I was too, I was far more concerned about getting it done on time. So I, mine weren't too pretty. Many of the folks you'll see today will be very fast, so it's gonna come down within, you know, very slim margins, usually between the weight distribution and then the, the technique. The first place winner today, Was throwing the heavy stuff and then I'll go to the next bag, throw more heavy stuff in there. Third bag, throw more heavy stuff, then start throwing, uh, building the walls around it. So like cereal box or like a little uh, popcorn box that was up there. I was <laughs> going pretty fast up there, but I was thinking through the whole time, even before about what, where I'm putting these items and uh, which bag's gonna weigh more than the other. Go into it to have fun. Don't, don't try to be, just, don't worry about winning, just have a good time. And you'll most likely come out on top. If you can't make it to the fair this year, here's your chance to soak up the atmosphere in a segment we call, as if you were there at the fair.
We've come to the end of our first hour of fair highlights for this year, but we've got production teams all over the fairgrounds covering a wagon full of stories that we'll bring you all week long. We love that you've made these fair highlight programs part of your family and friends viewing tradition, but we also want to make sure that you have our fair content right at your fingertips. So we want you to know that you can check out our website and our YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages to get your daily dose of State Fair fun. There are several ways you can engage with us about our beloved State Fair anytime and anywhere. Tomorrow, we hope you'll join us again. We'll have some ladies calling chickens, some champions parading for the crowds, and some kiddos enjoying the ride. Thanks for being here with me, everyone. I'm loving every minute of this. We'll see you here tomorrow night for more highlights from the incredible Iowa State Fair. Until then, I'm Bill Riley. Have fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2021 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... At EMC, we're committed to improving the communities we serve and the schools within them by donating our time, money, and resources, and by supporting the education of those pursuing a career in the insurance industry. Count on EMC. I am Kevin Rasmussen, and I am a pig farmer. We feel a deep responsibility to protect our environment and ensure sustainability. I think it's important to share our story and that others know that we're always striving to do better. Investing in a College Savings Iowa 529 account can give your future scholars financial support to pursue their educational dreams. They grow up fast. Learn more about planning for their tomorrow at collegesavingsiowa.com. Tonight's programming has been brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation. If you'd like to see more programs like tonight's show, donate at iowapbs.org. You're watching Statewide Iowa PBS.